Hello, <laughs> welcome to part two of this series where I go from game proto uh, concept to fun finished prototype. Um, it seems a little bit of a cloudy start to this video. It looks like it might rain and I am outside. So if this stops abruptly, it's because it rained. But in the last video, we went from uh, zero, figuring out what kind of thing I wanted to make, uh, creating a project, um, making something basically render and in this video we're going to take that render and we're going to add a few scripts to it to make it um, more interactive and uh, starting to feel a bit more like a game. Um, let's open up where we got to last time. Um, projects, escape earth, great, and we'll run that to make sure it's still, there we go. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to make this rocket rotate. Um, we're going to rotate it with a script. Now the scripting language that I use is Python, so you can add a new script, render script, ship script, great. And what you can do is we're going to animate um, a property of the ship mesh. Uh, you have access to every property that I have access to here. Um, anything you want, so we're going to have access to the rotation Y. Um, we're just going to update that every frame. First thing we need to do is we need to bring in that variable. We can rename it to whatever we like, and that's the name we'll use within our script. So that means that ship rotation will be mapped to ship mesh rotation Y. Great. First thing we need to do is we need to load it into our a local variable in Python. We're going to load it into rot y equals, and then to get access to this asset variable, we put it in square brackets, and the engine knows how to deal with that. And basically, there's a helper for you. Now this will run every frame plus one. So every frame, it'll just get plus one, and then we need to load that local variable back into the uh, variable ship rotation. We do that with ship rotation equals rot y. Cool, pretty simple. Apply, close, save. And now what we need to do is we need to associate that script with the mesh. Let's have a look. We see here the render event scripts. All we do is click that, associate it, apply, close. Now we need to do one more thing to make sure this actually works, and that's Play render script. By default, that's at zero. Nothing will happen. So you put that to one. Close, apply, close, save. And now, when we run, the rocket is rotating. But this isn't perfect, as every time it goes around the render loop, it alters and runs the script. So that means faster computers, this will run faster. Slower computers run slower. Very old games used to do this, and that was absolutely fine. You could probably get away with doing it, um, but it's not very, um, it's not very good, especially if you want to like bring balance to a game. It'll feel very different on different machines. So we can see, sort that out. Um, as is a render event script, you have access to a few little variables already. You have access, for example, for to FPS. And so with FPS, you can work out a time-based mo motion. I do this all the time. So I added a quick script template. It's the only thing I really do all the time. So this, all we need to do is replace one with time-based movement. Add a few more zeros to that. Now one more thing we need to do is we need to make sure and detect the case where this FPS is zero. If it's zero, we're dividing by zero and that will give an error. So just quickly, easily, FPS is greater than zero. We'll only run that code if it's greater than zero. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. And that should have the same effect. There we go. Now you can probably spot it a little, little jutters at times. I'm using a very old laptop and with recording and the webcam and playing it at the same time, it has a bit of trouble. Uh, Right, the next thing I want to do is, the original design had the, the rocket coming out of the screen. Um, this is the complete wrong view. Uh, so I'm just going to alter that. I'm going to alter it while it's still running. 
just makes it easier to visualize. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set that back to zero so we're going to go back inside the rocket. And that makes it so we can't see anything. And then we're going to change this to 90 to look straight down. That looks kind of cool, looks like Umbrella Corporation. And then we're going to go up in the Y axis. And now we're looking at the top of the rocket. Close. Great, I'll we'll apply that. So it's going to happen next time. Right, the next thing I want to do is I want to make it so you can control the rocket using user input. Now what we need to do is we need to make a user input script. And that's a key event script. Script, key event, user input. Now we're not gonna associate this user input with um, the same way we did before because that was with uh, associated with the mesh. This is gonna be associated with the window. So game window, we can actually set it here, user input. Great. Okay. Apply, close, save. Great, user input. Now with a key event script, we have access to different things. Button um, makes this pretty obvious. Uh, X and Y could be if it's a mouse. This can be for mouse as well as keys. Input type and input value. We'll go over these. Now, um, just to visualize how it is and what's happening, if we go print, cast to a string, and then put button, we can test to make sure this is definitely working. Apply, close, save. Um, what we need to do is to make sure the console window is showing, because we've told it to print to the console. Now, if I press left mouse, uh, left um, arrow key, you can see it says 1100. I actually said that twice, because that's registered pressing it down and lifting it up. Now up, right, left, down. They're the keys we're going to use. So what we need to do is we need to handle those. Uh, this is the local variables. These are variables that will be owned by this user input script. Um, so we're going to make one for each of those keys left, down. So if left is down, up, down. If the up key is down, right down and down down okay that's good now we also need to um, deal with up and down cases and that is input value I believe so if we go if input value equals zero. That's pressing the button down. Now if button equals one one zero zero, that would be if the left button is down. <coughs> and if the left button is down, we're gonna put left down to one. Great. Now we're going to do that for the other other values. Now copy and paste. That will definitely get something wrong. I can hear thunder. <laughs> That's quite stressful when you're trying to make a video. Left, up, right. Down. Right, and the other thing we need to handle, else, if the input value is not zero, that means the button is up, so we need to reverse these back to zero. Great. Now, apply, close, save. Now, when we press the key down, it'll load that va variable. Let's just check to make sure that works. Yep, no error tells me that's probably working. Um, good, yeah, it's quite a not very sunny day here today. Um, currently in Cambodia, if you're interested in that, go and see our daily vlogs we do. Well, it's kind of daily, we'll see. We don't have power a lot of the time. Um, you can see them at yes, uh, youtube.com forward slash live life in a box. Uh, this video is actually sponsored by me, because no one else does. 
Uh, and if you're interested, I have already released one prototype using this engine. Is this a game? Is this a game plays with the idea of what a game is? Um, it's a bit for fun. Uh, hopefully it'll make you smile. And it's actually a free download and you can name your own price. The idea is if you pay any money and it gets over and the whole thing together gets over five hundred dollars I will turn this prototype into a full commercial game and as a thank you you will get this game for free. Okay back to it. Right so now we've got the user input we've got this variable that changes based on when you press the key. What we need to do now is move the ship based on that. So the variables we need to do we need to have access to we're going to have access to position X and position Z of the ship mesh. We're going to do a very basic movement for this for this video. And what we need to do is go. Uh, sh let's go ship X model ship mesh, and then that's position X and ship Z model ship mesh. That's position Z. Great. The next thing we need to do is we need to know when the buttons are pressed. Exactly done exactly the same. Up, down, and we go to scripts rather than models this time, and user input, user input, we can get access to the variables we just set up in the script. Up, down. Down, down. Make sure we get these so they're actually lined up. Script. Left down. And right down. Scripts. User input. Right down. Okay. Okay. So, now we're going to deal with the movement of the ship. Again, it's going to use time-based movements. We're going to put it inside this uh, branch of uh, the if loop. And so let's go if up down equals one. If up down equals one, what we're going to do is we're going to move the ship um, Z um, up um, some value. And that value will be move speed. Let's fill now, put that at 100. Okay, so let's get ship X first. Ship equals ship X. Like before, what that's doing is it's bringing in the value from the engine into the scripting language so you can edit it. Now we're going to move it. I can't remember if that's plus or minus, but we can just try it. We can use our time-based movement again and put move speed. Great. Now what that won't do anything yet. Because what we need to do is we need to put that new value back into ship X. Ship X equals ship X. Great, so if up is down, um, we are going to move on X. Um, and that's actually wrong. It needs to be ship Z. Because we were doing horizontal. There we go. So now it'll move the Z axis, not the X axis. That makes more sense. Right, we're going to do that for all the other keys. Do down first, because that's the easiest. That's just going to be the opposite. And left down equals ship x. Equals ship x. Ship x. Ship x. Ship x. And then the opposite for right. Great. Now I'll be very amazed if I've mapped those correctly and it doesn't go right when I want to go left. 
uh, but I can't be bothered to work it out. Um, I'm just going to try it, see what happens. Apply, close, save. There's a big and on my screen. <laughs> right, so if I press left, it goes really fast to the left. If I go right, it goes really fast to the right. Up, it goes down, and down, it goes up. So I'm just going to alter those things very slightly. So up and down are flipped. That's very easily done. Because that's too lazy to work out. Good. And it's far too fast. So we'll divide that by 10. And so now when we go left, the rocket goes left, up, right, down. Cool. It's starting to look a bit gamey. That's where we're going to stop with this one. Um, I'm going to upload this using the deploy and that's going to go straight to itch. It'll be live and you'll be able to download it. Uh, if you liked this video, please give it a, a like, a thumbs up. And this is brand new. So um, if you'd like to support this, um, copy the link and share it on Twitter or YouTube, anywhere you can. Tell people about it. That'd be great. Thanks very much. Bye.